From San Diego, please welcome Ken Rosenthal. fortunate few going home with the gold, we offer our congratulations as we take one final look at the highlights of the 1997 United States National Aerobic Championship. A special thanks to director Bruce Bryan and the hardworking television crew, Mrs. Bryan Drever, for them saying goodbye for now and we hope that you'll join us later for the 8th Annual World Aerobic Championship. Coming up on baseball tonight, Wayne Huizenga. This weekend, we are learning more about the mass suicide in Rancho Santa Fe. We'll have the latest along with the rest of the day's news.
You're looking for a special restaurant this Easter weekend? Well, we're going to take you out for some lobster on today's trip down Restaurant Row. And we'll meet the local loan officer who is also a national aerobics champion. News that hits home every day. This is 10 News Weekend. In the news on this Saturday, we are learning more about the 39 people who committed suicide this week in Rancho Santa Fe. And the details are especially bizarre about the leader of that cult. There are reports today that Marshall Applewhite founded the Heaven's Gate cult after being fired from a Houston college for having an affair with a male student. We have also learned that some of the male members of the cult had been surgically castrated. Applewhite was one of the men who had the operation. The castrations were apparently performed long before before the cult members were found dead this week. Officials say they're working around the clock to complete autopsies and notify family members. Trying to help the families cope with the situation uh, on dealing with the death and trying to assist them in starting their grieving process as far as Officials have notified 35 of the 39 victims' families so far. Among the relatives was Michelle Nichols, the actress who played Lieutenant Uhura on Star Trek. Her brother, Thomas Nichols, was among the dead. A San Diego woman believes her stepbrother took part in the mass suicide. For privacy reasons, she doesn't want us to fully identify her or where she lives. Leanne Kim has more in this exclusive report. Which results in separation and death, similar to cutting a leaf. From a tree. Nerves run high as Holly and her in-laws look for Joel McCormick. They are searching through a videotape farewell by cult members, but in this tape, they don't recognize him. As I said, it's been eight years since I've seen him, and um, just I'm still uncertain. Medical examiners confirm that a 29-year-old man, Joel Peter McCormick, is one of these people found dead in Rancho Santa Fe. Holly says Joel cut off contact with the family five years ago, and since then, relatives have been researching cults, trying to find him. When she first heard news of the mass suicide, Holly says she thought of her stepbrother, but was doubtful. My reaction was, couldn't possibly be, you know, the odds are just too slim that this would be the same people. But those doubts quickly disappeared when Holly's stepdad recognized this man, the cult's leader, Marshall Applewhite. He surfaced many times during the family's research, and they believe Joel followed him. So as reality sinks in, Holly says so does the anger, knowing that Joel may have lived only minutes away, and they never knew. I'm angry at the, the cult not allowing him to make any kind of contact. Leanne Kim, 10 News. Meanwhile, things are starting to calm down in the Rancho Santa Fe neighborhood where the suicides took place. Yesterday, workers from the county public administrator's office cleaned out the suicide house, removing furniture and other belongings. They took the articles to the administrator's warehouse where they'll be stored until the families claim them. Unclaimed items could be sold at a public auction. So on this Saturday, here is what we know. The latest on the cult suicide investigation. All 39 bodies have now been identified, and the families of 35 of the dead have been notified. Investigators say some of the male members of the cult were chemically castrated. The medical examiner will continue performing autopsies throughout the weekend. The bodies will start being released to families on Monday of next week. In other news, police are looking for a hit-and-run driver who killed a man as he was crossing the street. It happened last night in Logan Heights. To add to the tragedy, the victim's children were waiting in the family car. Witnesses say 38-year-old Roberto Ririeno crossed the street to visit a church. On his way back, he was hit and killed. Witnesses say the children did not see what happened. Police are looking for a white Hyundai with Baja license plates, tinted windows, and a broken windshield. In national headlines on this Saturday, the man accused of shooting Bill Cosby's son has pled not guilty. 18-year-old Mikhail Merkusev made the plea in the, his arraignment yesterday. The judge would not allow cameras to take pictures of him. Police arrested Merkusev two weeks ago for the January shooting of Ennis Cosby. His preliminary hearing has now been set for April the 18th. There will be no delays in the trial of Oklahoma City bombing suspect Timothy McVeigh. Yesterday, a federal appeals court denied defense requests to put off the trial, so the case will begin as scheduled on Monday. More than 1,700 journalists are expected to turn out, and the media organizer says 
he is very excited about it. Surrounded by steel, by cement, it begins Monday and we're ready. The defense had argued that news stories about the alleged confession by McVeigh have made it almost impossible to find an impartial jury. Don't be surprised if you find protesters at your local market today. Activists from the group Last Chance for Animals will be protesting at markets around the city of San Diego. The group hopes to tell shoppers about product testing on animals. Four separate protests are scheduled between 10 this morning and 2.30 this afternoon. Well, I don't have to tell most of you, it is Easter weekend and Easter egg hunts are going to be going on all over the county today and tomorrow. Here are just a few of the places that you can take your children for Easter eggs, for candy, prizes, and of course, to visit with the Easter Bunny. The Easter egg hunt is just underway at Heritage Park in Old Town. It features crafts and displays of bunny rabbits by the House Rabbit Society. At Mission Bay, more than 6,000 eggs are going to be hidden for kids ages 10 and under at Belmont Park. That begins at 11 a.m. and at 1.30, the annual Easter Extravaganza in Coronado will feature an egg hunt and a carnival. Lots going on. Very exciting day for the yeah, kids tomorrow. Very exciting day. Well, coming up, Leon Smitherman will take us to another Easter event going on today in the Gas Lamp Quarter. And do you know how to juggle? Well, if not, we have found a man who can show you. We'll be right back with that. It's what you've come to expect from Inside Edition. Up close with fascinating people. More investigative reporting. This vehicle's unsafe.